My daughter is young. My nephew is a tween. He's a very loud child, and his meltdowns are frequent, i.e. you set out his dinner, and if the knife, fork, and plate aren't set exactly straight, he could go on screaming for three hours. He is in several types of therapy, but they don't seem to be helping much. My sister has reported that he's been getting worse in some areas. He has started seeing a new therapist, and she's asking that he spend time with other neurotypical children to pick up behaviors with them, hopefully. She contacted me and asked if I'd set up a play date for him and my daughter. The thing is, my daughter is terrified. He scares her. With excessive screaming and yelling, he'll sometimes throw things at the walls during meltdowns, throw himself to the ground. Unfortunately, his parents have very little control when he gets to this point, so it's a waiting game. She doesn't ever want to see him. If I ever mention seeing him, she'll start crying, get upset, and she'll repeat how much she hates him and wishes he would leave and never see her again. I'm not going to force her to see him. Honestly, as much as it sounds awful, I don't want him in my house either. The last time he was, he left my house in disarray. I had to replace my entire bathroom door. He stabbed it with my toilet paper holder, left a decently sized hole so it had to be replaced. My sister is upset. My daughter is the only typical child she knows that his mom trusts enough to be around him. She hasn't outright said it, but I've heard from our other sister that she's now blaming me for the failing therapy. I feel awful myself. I know this is the last therapist they're trying before they go full ABA therapy. If this doesn't work, they're going all out. If that doesn't work, my sister has stated that they'll drop him off at an institution and leave him there. I can't help but feel like I'm dooming him, but I do need to put my child first. My sister is holding ABA for him over my head, essentially stating that him going through ABA will be my fault, but my daughter is much happier now that I've confirmed she won't have to see him. I'm stuck. I feel like a crappy person either way. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Your sister wants everyone else to fix her kid, and if they fail, she's already planning on abandoning him to an institution? It sounds like she wants therapy to fail, so she has an excuse to lock him away and blame it on others. How long has he been in therapy? Does she keep switching providers because they aren't working miracles fast enough? Is he not in school? Why is your child the only option for socialization? The nephew should be in school. He's been in therapy for 18 months, and they usually do about a year per therapist. Unless he gets worse, then they switch quicker. But I think he has four therapists right now, so they have seen many. Yikes! Switching therapists every year is not a great way to develop progress, especially considering he may only see one of them once or twice a month. And your daughter is not your nephew's emotional support animal. She gets to decide who to spend time with, not you or your sister. And if she doesn't want to, you shouldn't force her. You have a responsibility to your child, then to people outside of your immediate family. It's not your job to fix this. Honestly, Based on what OP posted, the kid might have a better chance at a specialized facility where they will work with him. I have a sibling who had to be in one because of his needs, and the staff was fantastic. However, it sounds like Sister isn't exactly putting a ton of effort into supporting what the therapists are doing. Autism is a spectrum, and not everyone is the same, but the right therapy with parents who have completely bought in makes a huge difference. I honestly feel bad for the kid. His parents have set him up for failure, and ultimately he will suffer the most. Not the idiot. Your sister is blaming you because she's at her wit's end. It's not right and unfair, but my guess is it's a way of venting. I hope your family has encouraged your sister to seek mental health counseling, if she isn't doing so already. Parenting a special needs child is very taxing and mentally draining. But for the love of God, do not do this to your child. She's a person not a therapy tool. If your sister chooses to put him in ABA therapy, it will be her fault, not yours. I, 21 female, have been with my boyfriend, 24, for four years. We are both in college and don't have a lot of money altogether because of that. I have more money saved up, but that's only for college, so I don't really even consider that money that I have, if that makes sense. So I am deathly allergic to peanuts, and it has been this way my whole life. I was told even the smallest speck could kill me. 
so I've been very careful, and in my entire life, I've only had to use my EpiPen twice. My boyfriend knows this, yet he continues to eat peanut products, but I just make sure not to kiss him when he has had something peanut that day. He washes, etc. I never liked that he didn't stop because I felt like he was putting me in danger, but I also couldn't force him to stop either, and it has worked for the past years. What happened? So he came over into my dorm, and we were just hanging out, and he kissed me, and a couple of minutes later, I could feel my throat swelling, and my lips were getting bigger. I instantly knew that I had an allergic reaction. I grabbed my EpiPen, shot it into my leg, and told my boyfriend to take me to the ER. Even with the EpiPen, I was struggling and was nearly passing out. My boyfriend was really freaking out too. Once I got to the ER, I was taken in, and the last thing I remember was passing out on the wheelchair. I woke up and my reaction was down, and I was having the side effects of the adrenaline, but overall okay. I got my phone out and my phone was blown up with apologies, and how he forgot he ate a Reese's cup, and he was so sorry, and to please forgive him. Once I finally got home and settled down, my parents picked me up. I told my boyfriend he should be responsible for my medical bill and a new EpiPen. The other one my school has, and he was telling me he had no money and he can't, and that I have more money than him, etc. I was pretty peeved off at him because he just nearly killed me, and now he won't even take responsibility for my medical bills. Well, word got out to his family, and I received rude texts from his mom saying it's my allergy, so I should have to pay the medical bill, and I was the one irresponsible. So I got mad and texted my boyfriend, saying it was dumb to bring his mom into this, then proceeded to say that if he doesn't, I'm going to take him to small claims court because I don't have an extra $5,000 to spare for a medical bill. He got very upset, and I'm pretty sure our relationship is over now. I've gotten a lot more texts from his mom and his sisters, and I'm choosing to ignore them. My parents agreed that I should go and do that, but I'm just not sure. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. You've been in a relationship with him for four years, and he forgot he ate something you're allergic to? He doesn't care about your well-being. If someone I loved had a deadly allergy, I would do everything in my power to keep them safe. Why won't he do that for you? Also, he was 20, and you weren't even an adult when you got together. In some places, that's illegal. As for pursuing legal action against your boyfriend, it's probably not going to be worth it. While his failure to warn you put you in danger, you also have a responsibility to minimize your risk. Staying with a person who could accidentally kill you because of his lack of forethought was irresponsible on your part and reduced his level of culpability. Even so, he has no income and no means to repay you. There's not much to recoup here, even if you win, so this will likely cost more than you can hope to recover. Not the idiot, but doing this is pointless. My best friend is dating a guy who is deathly allergic to peanuts. They've been together for five years, and I swear her favorite thing about girls' trips is getting to eat peanuts because she doesn't eat them unless she's literally in a separate city for days. It's a sacrifice she's happy to make because she loves him. You are the idiot because this has been going on for years. He doesn't care. And the other commenter was correct. Care enough about yourself to not put up with this crap from someone willing to put your life in danger over a peanut butter cup. My 22 female, boyfriend 24, and I are living together. He recently started a new fancy job and has to wake up early in the morning. So I always get up from the bed an hour before to make breakfast for him. Then I go back to wake him up personally because he says alarm clocks don't work on him. I also work, but he makes more money than me. The issue is that he is now complaining that I make too much noise while getting ready in the morning, messing up his last two hours of sleep. We have our bathroom connected directly to our room. Our place has an ugly small room that we never use. I think it's supposed to be a maid's room, and he wants me to move all my clothes there so that I can dress in a different place in the morning. I am particularly uncomfortable with that room's bathroom, which is very small and ugly, and he wants me to move all my makeup and stuff there. He doesn't even want me to shower in our main bathroom during the morning because that wakes him up. I don't want to do this. He says that he needs to sleep the most so he can do his job well and that his job should be our priority because he provides most of the money. 
I think that is too much, but maybe he's right. We've been arguing about this. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. There is a solution to this problem. It has already been created for people who don't wake up with regular alarms. Originally invented for the deaf and hearing impaired community, there are vibration alarms that work splendidly. If the one inbuilt into his phone is not strong enough, there are ones in the shape of pads designed to lie underneath him on the mattress. It's impossible to sleep through them. So if he wakes by you shaking him, he will wake with this alarm. Isn't that wonderful news? Now he can get up and make his breakfast. Remember this, OP. You are not the maid. First, maids get paid an actual wage. Second, employers don't sleep with their maids. Do not allow your partner to treat you like the hired help for one more day. This ends now. I really mean this, OP. You deserve to be treated better than this. Not the idiot. Sleep in with him. He can make breakfast for himself and wake you two up problem solved. On a more serious note, why don't you two stand up together? He gets out of bed half an hour earlier and you half an hour later. You have the same amount of preparation time for breakfast, etc. And nobody is annoyed by the other person being loud. Oh, and also, that I bring the money home therefore I am the master thingy, is quite toxic. The solution is not to get up and make breakfast for him or wake him up. This will ensure he gets his extra hour of sleep. Also, can we talk about the fact that he says an alarm won't wake him up, but the sounds of her getting ready wake him up? In what world does that make any sense? If her getting ready wakes him up, he's been flat out lying about alarms not working for him. Liars don't deserve someone making their breakfast for them. My sister-in-law and I gave birth around the same time this year, so we have babies of similar age, just that mine was born a month earlier than hers. Two days ago, brother and sister-in-law came over for lunch with their four-month-old. Everything was cordial between us until then. After lunch, sister-in-law and brother-in-law handed over my niece to me for babysitting so they could attend a formal event held by sister-in-law's extended family near my location. During the time they were gone, my niece started crying because she was hungry. Unfortunately, we ran out of formula and didn't rely on it in our household as I nursed my baby most of the time. I did not have any other alternative except nurse my niece, which I did a few times because they were gone a long time. They came back and sister-in-law and I had a casual conversation till I told her that niece was hungry and we ran out of formula, so I nursed her. Sister-in-law looks at me sternly with a hint of disgust and berates me for nursing niece. I did not retaliate because I was too shocked at why she would be so agitated when I fed her child. If I had formula, I would have used it for my niece, but I ran out of it, and it was only me, my child, and my baby niece. How am I going to leave them alone and then run to the supermarket to buy formula? I don't have two-seater baby prams either, so I can't bring them along to the supermarket. If sister-in-law had a preference, she should have brought some formula in the baby essentials pack she passed to me. Unfortunately, there were only diapers, rash cream, and a pacifier in the bag she gave me, but there was no prepackaged milk or formula powder, and they probably assumed I had formula. So am I just supposed to let my niece be hungry till they come back? I don't know what she expected me to do. Sister-in-law has not been attending my call since this, and honestly, I feel bad. I want to apologize, but sister-in-law has not been responding. This got me thinking. Am I the idiot? I'm on the fence here because it does seem wrong for someone to nurse someone else's baby without permission. But it was sister-in-law's responsibility to pack formula for her child to make sure the child could be fed. I'll go with everyone's the idiot here because there could have been communication about this before sister-in-law left. Or you could have texted her to let her know. Still, you're a new mother with two babies to watch and probably exhausted. Not the idiot. They did not leave the formula. So what were you supposed to do? They should have made sure it was available so this wouldn't happen. It's on them. I can understand sister-in-law being upset, but come on, what was the alternative, given that you could not go out to get any? Agree. Who on earth leaves their kid with no food? I've forgotten wipes, a spare pair of pants, but food? So you were just supposed to sit there and listen to an infant scream from hunger? Your sister-in-law is an idiot. I hope she feels like an idiot for forgetting food for her child and lashing out, not because you fed her child. You are the idiot, OP. 
All other times you've babysat this child, you've provided the formula and haven't asked them to bring any. Of course, they would assume this would be the case this time too. It was your responsibility to let them know the situation was different this time to pack formula like they pack diapers. Something about this bothers me. You knew you had no formula and that they'd never packed it before. It seems almost intentional that you didn't say anything before they left. It feels like a very gross boundary violation that you would be so casual about this. My male 26, wife 24, got pregnant about four months ago. Before getting married, we agreed not to have children, but then her IUD failed and she decided to keep it. So now we're in the process of getting a divorce. We filed the week she made her decision, but the process is somewhat slow for some bureaucratic things in my country. The problem is we're still living together. She doesn't have family in this country and her mother is coming in about three months to help her with the moving and the baby. But in the meantime, we're still living in my house, just in separate rooms. Recently, she decided to start an insanely healthy diet for the baby and replaced all her meals with veggie shakes and salads, meat substitutes, almond milk. You get me. This would be okay as I don't care what she eats, but she threw out all my food from the fridge because of cross-contamination concerns and is actively bothering me to keep the same diet as her, saying I should support her because she's trying to be healthy for the baby. Last night, I was too tired after work to eat a proper meal outside, so I just ordered some fried chicken. She went nuclear with the delivery guy and me, so I ended up eating and sleeping in my car. We're still fighting. I don't see the point of me doing a diet. If she wants to take care of herself and her baby, that's her issue. The food I eat has zero relevance to her health, and it's not like I'm unhealthy enough for her to be worried about if I'll be able to pay child support for the next 18 years which of course I will. So, am I the idiot? You are the idiot for the whole her baby, her problem thing, but not for the food. Like, that's her choice to change her eating and not your problem, especially if you're not sticking around, but still totally wrong over not taking any responsibility towards the kid. No form of birth control is 100%. You didn't care whether or not you got someone pregnant, because if so, you'd have gotten a vasectomy but they did make a no kids agreement. As a woman, before you make that agreement, you consider the possibility of birth control failure and whether you would be okay with the termination. She entered into this knowing he could impregnate her and chose to be okay with this. She changed her mind, which is 100% her right, and he's agreed to pay child support, but he has a right to feel upset about this. He's not a villain. She isn't either because it sounds like she's probably dealing with a lot of stress and anxiety over baby and divorce. Communication is the big problem here. Not the idiot. And this is said by a woman who grew up without a father. You made your point clear from the beginning. You were honest, and you're doing your part by providing financial support now and plan on continuing to do so. While this whole diet thing is just your ridiculous cherry on top of the very messy cake your life has become, even in a working relationship, husbands are not obliged to follow diets that their pregnant spouses start on a whim, especially without consulting a doctor. People will accuse you of being heartless and unable to do the decent thing, but I do remember my father, who used to show up a couple times per year, completely uncomfortable and not in the least loving. I'd rather he didn't. Not every person is meant to become a parent. Learn from your mistake and start using protection until you can have your vasectomy, even if your next partner already uses protection on her own.